we've got a few more coming in as we speak, so it's quite nice. Um, so in, in keeping with Agile uh, 2020 and, and um, what Agile states and the idea of collaborating and communicating, it was really fortuitous that I bumped into Yvette at a completely different event. Um, but it, uh, we're sort of demonstrating the whole idea that this idea of collaboration has increased tenfold since we've actually had um, lockdown enforced on us. And it also has illustrated to us the ability of how we can interface virtually much more easily. And my background comes from a variety of different uh, components, but um, more recently, I've been very much involved in looking at authentic leadership and communication, which I've transposed into um, a virtual context. So most of my training and my facilitation is now online. So a little bit about me, but I'm delighted to be here and to be part of Agile 2020 Reflect and to be co-hosting with Yvette. So Yvette, if you want to introduce yourself as well. Yes, my name is Yvette Francino and I have been in the software development world since early 80s. I got into leadership and, my, and I'm so excited that my first management job that I have someone here, Richard Helderblum, who uh, was on my team, my global team, that, and that was in 1999. And it was since that time that I recognized the beauty of virtual teaming and global, the, the benefits of it. I got involved in becoming an agile, an agilist, and first a scrum master, and, and then an agile leader in many ways, and now an agile coach and trainer and author. Um, but one thing about Agile that they push is the face-to-face -face communication. So we're going to talk about that. And uh, I've always been a little bit that think that that's been misinterpreted in a lot of the organizations I've been in. So I want to really, this, this presentation is all about stressing the benefits of virtual uh, teaming and how we can be very effective in collaboration and communicating at a distance. All right. So let's... Uh Go ahead. So, yeah, Yvette, are you happy for me to take over? Yes, please. please. Great. I, I thought I thought I'd show you this slide. It it, it uh, never ceases to amaze me when we're on Zoom, when we're on an inter interface like this, um, how different it is with regard to what we concentrate on and what our thoughts are. When you meet somebody in a room, very often you are more attentive to begin with because you're busy looking at the person. However, when you meet somebody in a Zoom room, quite often what happens is we end up uh, just being happy that we're seeing other people in the room. We're busy checking out what we look like and whether or not we've our makeup straight or uh, what the co-workers' ho houses happen to look like, what their backgrounds are like. Um, so there's quite a lot of immediate responses when we go onto a Zoom room that take our concentration away from the actuality of the meeting. And you can see here, there's only about 2% um, initially that we think about the person to whom or the people with whom we are communicating. And I thought it would be quite fun um, to just do a wee breakout room on that front and just ask you to have a think about uh, what it is that you immediately do when you go online um, with regard to when, you're, when, you, when you see somebody. Do you actually concentrate on their face or what triggers you? What thoughts come into your head? Don't think too much about it. But we'll just quickly put you in breakout room for a couple of minutes to introduce yourselves and to break the ice a little bit and just to have some thoughts about that instantaneous thought process that happens when you go online. So have we got nine uh, or uh, six, um, I think eight. Uh, I've got nine in my screen, including us. Okay. So I'll, uh, yeah, I'll put, um, I'm just gonna, you, you, if you do the breakout rooms, Yvette, because you're hosting there. Okay. We're going to have three breakouts. Great to see your faces with your cameras, guys. Thanks for putting them on. <laughs> yeah. And um, you'll be in your breakout room for a couple of minutes again, just discuss with your teammates um, that little instant reaction, what happens yeah. when you switch on. <laughs> yeah. Okay, here we go.
Claudia, it looks like you're, do you want to stay in the main session here? Can you hear me? Hi, hi. <laughs> okay. Well, that was a first for me. Oh, was it? <laughs> the, the breakout room. <laughs> oh, good. Get to any um, that anybody had. Anybody want to make any comments or observations? Uh, yeah, carry on, to Richard. Yeah, well, um, uh, we both agreed that uh, having the video on is, is nice. Uh, to actually see the person when you're, when you're communicating, uh, but also depends on what the meeting is about, I guess. Yeah. yeah. Um, Harold was mentioning about um, virtual backgrounds and I thought it was quite interesting because um, if I don't have my virtual background, then I get, everybody sees my untidy office and I feel I've got to rush around tidying it. So I usually use a virtual background, but quite correct, you know, when I'm fl flailing my arms around, you can, unless I use my arms very consistently, and consistently in front of my body, you can lose, lose what's happening when I'm using my body language. So quite interesting. Any other reflections? I was saying that this is my tidy corner of the room. That side of the laptop lid is a mess. It's, the, <laughs> it's just the nice corner that's okay to show. <laughs> uh, good, good. Um, well, if there's nothing else, I'll pass back over to Vet and put the slides back on and we can crack on with just uh, what we're going to offer you today. Uh, right, let me just... Now, keep me, keep me in the picture if the tech goes wrong, Yvette, okay? Can you all see this? Yeah, I think yeah. we could see it, yes, but it's in, um, it's not in presentation. Okay, give me a minute. For some reason, 
it just seems to like going from my desktop rather than going into the Zoom. So this should be better now. How's that? Yeah, that's perfect. Great. Okay, I'll pass back to you, Yvette. All right. So as, as you all know, communication and collaboration is very important, but what it really is what is really important here isn't that we are physically in the same room, but that we're building trust. So that is really the key here that we're trying to emphasize is that you don't feel that you can't have trust just because you aren't in, in the same room with each other. Uh, Wendy, if we go to the next slide, those of us that are in the Agile community know that there is a, uh, one, one more slide. Um, yeah, the sixth principle, this was what I wanted to get to. We know that we have a manifesto and we have 12 principles. And I am very bought into all of them, but the sixth principle has been misunderstood and I think misused in a lot of agile organizations. So the sixth principle reads, the most efficient and effective method of conveying information to and within a development team is face-to-face -face con conversation. And um, the reason for that is because there is so much communication we often do through body language. So the intent of that sixth principle is really that we want to, we really value the human connection. We really value the relationship. And so if you are face to face with someone, then you see not only you not only hear what they're saying, which when we're using tools and emails and everything else, so we're just looking at the words. But when we have a face-to-face -face communication with somebody, we also see their body language. And, and that helps us build friendships. And it is a lot easier to collaborate and form strong bonds when you have that face-to-face -face communication. However, I know personally, as I said in the introduction, from my 1999 uh, role as a, as, as a leader with a global team, that you can build that um, even if you're not face-to-face. -face. And there actually are a lot of benefits you can get from having this work from anywhere type of mentality. So I'm gonna open it up. It, I don't know if you guys can use the chat, if we're gonna be able to see the chat when, um, but uh, for a minute. With, without looking at the slides, just what benefits do you have now because of COVID? Most of us, even if we weren't, if we were working in a co-located environment, now often we aren't because of COVID. And um, there may have been some resistance to this, or maybe some of you found this was wonderful, or maybe some of you did it all along. But I would, I'd like to hear from you of what do you think some of the benefits are from working in a virtual environment. Or, and you can, you, you can either put it in the chat or you can just speak up if you want. We're all on an even playing field. I like that one, Christy. Yeah, you know, that is another thing that happened in, the, in some of the Agile teams that I've been on because they've promoted so much face-to-face -face communication. There were times where you had remote members because you still had and those people were sometimes excluded. You had all the people that were in the office that were teaming really strongly and forgetting about some of those remote people. So that is a great one that I didn't even mention on the slide that is really true when everybody is distributed, you're kind of equally then really focusing on how can we keep this, this teaming strong. So that's a great one. Richard, peace and quiet, not a noisy environment. Yeah, you have flexibility. Um, so that's another great advantage. And, and you, you know, you can do some things that you can do at home with the, the lines are blurred about it's not about seeing somebody working. It's about getting the work done. It is, and, and you can do that at the same time as you're enjoying some of the other flexibilities you have from working from anywhere. Um, the commute time, that's right, at no commute time. You know, another thing, when, you know, before COVID, again, I was a big proponent of work from anywhere. And um, if when you have that flexibility, if you have an ailing parent, or if you have a child that needs care or that kind of thing, I mean, you still, we want work to be done, of course, but you find ways to have that flexibility. So 
um, the importance of the face-to-face -face relationship is important both with our colleagues and with our families and, and, and having that flexibility of being able to, to be able to do work sometimes in an environment that we normally wouldn't have been able to before because we have a family need is also a great benefit. I'm just noting Corey's, um, is it Corey? Is that how you pronounce your name, Corey? Yeah, just noticing Corey's comment about meeting people um, from all the world. I mean, Yvette and I would never have met had we not been in this situation um, yeah. and the opportunities that have arisen as a result of um, being in lockdown have forced us into slightly different ways of working and, and, and opened new avenues. And from that perspective, it's been a joy because I, I'm meeting and seeing people from all over the world that I would not, not, would not normally come across. So that's a great comment, Corey. Yes, I, I love the accents too. <laughs> I love all of your accents. <laughs> I know, the global diversity is just awesome to learn about another culture. And, you know, a couple of others that I hadn't thought about the conference room availability too. Yes, that, that makes it easier. The recruitment becomes inclusive. I love that. Again, you're not, you're not limited by somebody being geographically there. So there really are, you guys have brought up a lot and there just are a lot of benefits from this work from anywhere mentality. But there are some challenges too. And there are challenges with technology. There are challenges with collaboration and, and gaining that trust. So I'm going to pass now um, back to Wendy and she's going to talk about communication challenges and how we can try to be really effective when we're doing these virtual teaming things. Yeah, so that just recapping on what you've said there, more or less we covered quite a lot um, on the chat box, but what I'm going to take you through is more of a, uh, an instructional guide, if you like. Now, I may well be teaching you to suck eggs, but I believe um, wisdom and learning is always uh, there. And even though you might have heard some of it before, it might just tweak your, um, your thought process to remind you of how you can do things in perhaps a, a different way or a better way. So what I've done is um, I've just seen set the whole uh, aspect of virtual communication and, and what I offer to people when we're talking about um, being the best we can be in that setting. Uh, so what we were going to suggest is, um, I don't think we'll take the time at the moment, but it might be useful in the chat box for you also to write down any specific learnings or any things that you might like to hear or cover on this course um, or on this session, just so that we know we're dotting the I's and crossing the T's. So just pop anything in the chat box that is sort of in your mind at the moment that you think, yeah, it'd be quite nice to hear or understand or get a wee bit more from that. And we may or may not be able to help you, but somebody within the group may well also be able to contribute to the, to the query that you might have. So just pop anything in the chat box and be as interactive as you can on that front. So let's kick off with thinking about how we can actually be our best within a virtual setting. Um, I give you a bit of context around about this. Uh, you know, we've come to a situation where approximately 98% of the population are now, um, let me see if I can get that one back up again, um, are now working remotely. Um, and that's just over the last 20, 12 months and it's going to be ever increasing. I would suggest long-term we will find more and more people end up working uh, remotely. And I think part of the, the key to, um, to the whole idea of having a remote meeting is making sure that before you go on to the meeting, the expectations of that meeting are set so that people know if they are encouraged to use a camera, then they're there. If they're encouraged to mute, then they're there. If, they're, um, if it's going to be an interactive session, they're not feeling uncomfortable. So really making sure before you actually go online and have a meeting, the, the agreement, if you like, the expectation of what that online meeting is going to be like is key. Because I've found even in the sessions I've done, um, I have not given enough information prior to them happening for people to realize that they're going to be involved or they're going to just be listening in their car as they drive. So it's really setting that scene that is, um, is quite uh, relevant to thinking about being uh, online. Because when you go into a room, you don't have to necessarily think about those things uh, into a, an actual room. So the key components that I consider when we're thinking about you know, being online and, and the, the importance and the relevance are these four areas. 
So, you know, being very familiar with your tech, knowing what interface you're going to use, we'll come back to that. How you use your voice to best effect. Now, most people do not think about their vocal intention and how they're going to speak. And it, when you've only got that happening in an online setting and you've minimized the body language, which is the third one, the way you use your voice is fundamental to, to really get engagement, to really get people buzzed and energized. And I think it's the key to success in a meeting or not having success, because that is going to be what gets you engagement with your audience, how you actually use your voice and how you build rapport through your voice. So I'll, if you're happy, I'm just going to take you through each one of these independently, just to give you some context of what I believe is important. But I would really appreciate if you've got any thoughts or any additions to make to what I say, stick them in the chat box. And Yvette, if you come across any salient points, feel free to add them in um, because I, I lose track. I can't see uh, so many faces when I've got my big screen up with the screen. So perhaps you can keep an eye on the chat. I so let's keep let me just also say that you know something in the chat did come up when you remind or, or ask the audience about what they want to check into and there's one about being disrespectful or multitasking which we are going to cover in the second portion of our of our talk so um thank you uh, christy for bringing that up but yes i'll be watching the chat as well if there are questions or things that people specifically want to ask about thank you so um, first of all, the tech. Now I know I'll probably be uh, telling you to teaching you to suck eggs because most of you will be more technologically advanced than myself. But I'll take you through the the um, what's it called the um, the guide the book guide books. I can't remember what they're called, but anyway, I'll take you through my thoughts on um, where you uh, should be thinking about. So. I frequently have meetings and people can't get online because they haven't checked their link. They haven't checked if things are working. There's an issue with their, their computer. Actually, it happened to me when I was coming on here. I didn't have my computer on in time and it was taking a long time to set up, et cetera, et cetera. So really be, a, be certain that you're checking things out well in advance of the meeting. Check your link, check your mics working, check your, your broadband's okay uh, to the best of your ability. And if any of these things are glitchy, Put it in the expectation at the beginning of the meeting, listen, I'm having a few issues with my broadband. It may be in and out a wee bit, but just understand that's where I'm at. So that there's not any um, barriers as you continue. So just make sure that you're actually thinking about that prior to, to when you start. Now, Harold, actually, when we were um, at the beginning in the, in the icebreaker, Harold was saying the first thing that he checks into when he turns on the meeting is himself. So he does check his position on the screen. He checks the reflection on his glasses because he's wearing glasses and whether or not there's any reflection behind. Hi again, Harold, nice to see your face. <laughs> um, so yeah, checking how you are on the screen, I think is really important. Um, and not, you know, I, I had so many meetings I go on and I've, I've got somebody down here and I can see their eyes and I'm thinking, lift your face up so I can see you a wee bit more. So just be aware of how you're coming across and what people are visually seeing on the screen. And that will be affected, obviously, by the light source um, and whether or not you might have a spotlight, whether or not the light's coming behind. So as I look at some of you at the moment, I'm noticing light that is having an effect on how I perceive you on the screen. So just thinking a little bit about these things, where the light's coming from, whether or not it's... Oh, Harold's gone into a different mode, <laughs> um, whether or not it's actually having an effect on, on what people are seeing with you. Um, and be aware of distractions. So, you know, if you are in a room that's really busy, and again, uh, something that came up was, um, if you've got a lot of books behind, people might be drawn to reading what's behind or what pictures you have in the screenshot. So just know what you are offering when you come on screen via technology. Know what you're wanting to put across um, and assist that as best you can with how you're setting your tech up. And be sensitive as well to your dogs barking in the background or your kids crying in the kitchen. Um, I've had numbers of meetings um, where I've had, to, you know, had to be faffing around muting people or bringing them on or, you know, so just being sensitive again to, to what's going on with muting. And also in an interactive meeting, you know, having your mic on and being able to communicate um, in a two way is, is as nice as just being sensitive to the fact if there are background noises. So it's simple, obviously common sense things, but it, there's no harm in revisiting these things just to make you more 
conscious of it. Now, if you do drop out personally, I think it's better to turn your camera off than have it on because people will just see a blank room without anybody on it. If you turn your camera off, it obviously means that something has cropped up rather than you're bored and you just left the room and um, because you've set an attention to actually turn your camera off. So just again, something that I, I feel personally, if I go out the room and I don't get an opportunity to, to say anything, um, I might put something in the chat box and say, excuse me a minute, I've just got to leave the room and I might switch my camera off so that they're not then looking at all sorts of stuff in the background. So that's the technology side. My baby is more on the vocal side. So stuff to really think about when you're using your voice and uh, we are lucky as human beings, we have a gift of being able to communicate verbally, but by God, a hell of a lot of us do it really badly. <laughs> um, so one thing I would say online, be aware of not being too verbose. So keep things succinct. It's much, much more difficult to concentrate if somebody's going off on a tangent and waffling. So keep things as succinct as you can when you're speaking online because you don't have the body cues to be able to engage people. And because we're only using vocal intonation, be really aware of multi-syllabic words because it's so easy to multi-word. Uh, so did you all catch what I just said a minute ago? Because it was a very multi-syllabic word, but in fact, you can't actually hear what's going on because you've only got your ears and you have you're not in the visual presence to be able to pick the cues up. So multi-syllabic syllabic words really use your mouth and get the word out as to what you're trying to say or wanting to say. And um, again, when you're in an, when you're in a, an actual space, you have the ability to really use your presence and really project what you're wanting to say via your body language but you do not have the same when you're in a virtual space. So making sure that you don't speak in the same tone all the time and it's actually can be quite dull and quite boring and it's really, really quite hard to engage with somebody who's speaking quietly and also speaking in the same tone because within two minutes, you probably find everybody switches the screen off because they're bored. So send your voice out to those that you're speaking with and invite the same back from them. You know, really encourage that dynamic action within your voice to get that engagement and that um, energy raised. I've seen so many meetings where I think, oh my goodness, I don't know if I'm going to be able to take the pace of this meeting um, and keep myself awake. So um, interestingly enough, in communication, what is said is less relevant than the way it is said. So how you say things is much more important than what you say because people will listen. So just be aware of that on a virtual meeting. And do think about pace and speed. If I have a, a fault, it's that, that I would get so energized and so um, uh, enthusiastic that I sometimes run away with my words. So having that dead space and slowing down and giving time to just allow people to listen and think is also a way of encouraging listening because when I stop speaking, what are you doing? You start listening. So you're waiting and in, in anticipation for the next thing to come out my mouth. So by stopping, I'm inviting you to so, so, sort of sit up in your chair and think, what's going to, what's happening next? What's going to be said next? So you're inviting that space. So think about the piece. Yeah, check the network, something broken. Sorry, Harold? To check the network if you're so quiet, if the <laughs> network is broken. Yeah. yeah, as long as I'm moving, you'll probably know that I'm still here, but my voice is not saying anything. <laughs> but yes, so absolutely. Get the attention, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And when you are wanting to, um, uh, lead a meeting or be involved in a meeting. Breathing, I know we take breathing for granted and we all assume that we are breathing all the time, otherwise we wouldn't be here, we'd be dead. Um, but taking a breath and using your breath to either slow yourself down on the outward breath or to take the inward breath and project out is also very relevant when we're using a virtual interface and we're really wanting to engage the audience. 
So practicing your vocals in relation to the breath becomes really key. And obviously listening, not just with your ears, but listening with your eyes, listening with everything that you've got available to you online. So you don't have kinesthetic, you don't have the touch and feel, but you certainly do have your ears and your eyes. So listen with as much of your, as many of your senses as you can. Um, and I think Yvette's going to talk a wee bit more about listening later, but actively there's three layers of listening. There's listening, active listening and deep listening. And uh, if I was doing a TED talk, the way you want to get people to listen to a TED talk is you have something that creates deep listening, which is an emotional connection. So the minute you go into an emotional connection with somebody, they're going to listen far more. And be aware of your body language. So yes, we're not in the room, but that doesn't mean to say that you can't use your body and you can't use your hands. Your hands are an extension of your mouth. The neurological link between your hands and your mouth is greatest. So anything you say with your mouth, you're obviously hardwiring with your hands. So be aware of that connection. It really makes a difference to um, bullet point things when you use your, your, your body language and make a decision in a meeting. If you, if you could have a virtual meeting standing up, why not have a change, you know, set the scene, the expectation. Let's have a Hubble meeting this morning, um, as you might do in the agile world, you know, rather than actually sitting around a desk. So let's do a, a, a virtual meeting in the same way. And enthusiasm, passion and energy is infectious. So any meeting, you know, we, it's great to have that uh, expectation of an outcome that fills you with that, you know, passion and energy and enthusiasm. Does anybody want to um, ask anything so far about what I've said or post anything in the chat box? Yvette, is there anything coming up in the chat box? Um, we had a, a note about Toastmasters, which I also am a, a, a Toastmaster. Uh, alumni and I agree that Toastmasters is a teaches a lot of these techniques of effective communication. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. Um, and I, I, as I say, we may well know these, but I don't think there's any harm hearing them again because I think um, we can always improve in what we do. And um, be aware of you when you're framing what you're saying. Think about what's coming out your mouth before you say it. And if there's words that you want to exaggerate or you want to really emphasize, punch those words out. You know, this is really important. So really punch words out so that you, become, you, you use the, uh, your, your, vo your voice in a, in a way which um, really will have a resonant, resonant effect on what you're wanting the listener to hear. And I'm sure some of you will know about inflection, but when you want to finish a sentence with authority, you go down at the end of it. If you want to um, uh, finish a sentence with a little bit more of a question or an invitation, you go up. And the minute you go up at the end of a sentence, you're encouraging invitation, you're encouraging questioning, you're encouraging, you're, you're being inclusive, you're being less dominant in a conversation. When you go down, you're finishing a sentence and you're bullet pointing it at the end as much to say, this is where we're going. And um, so no harm in actually thinking about that as we speak. Um, effects of your hands, I want you to try we exercise at the moment. So, um, and now can we do this all, hang on, let's just, what time are we at? Uh, right, uh, we haven't got time, but um, I was going to give you a wee exercise, quite interesting. When you go up at the end of a sentence, it's really hard to bring your hands down because naturally, because your, your hands are an extension of your mouth, when you speak, if you go up at the end of a sentence, your hands automatically go up. And it's very, very hard to do the opposite. And it's quite an interesting exercise for you to try. But um, so at the end of a sentence, your hands will automatically go down. And it's the way your body language works to, um, to really create this, uh, this situation of um, uh, emphasis and question. I'm going to speed up, excuse me. Um, we've talked about enthusiasm and passion, uh, passion and be aware of your word choices. Now I'm going to very quickly go on to word choices. I talk about the language traffic lights um, and the language traffic lights are um, how we use words to uh, get resourceful conversation happening. Now in Scotland, and we've got a couple of people from Scotland here, we sit in orange land because we're educated into being orange. Perhaps maybe might, that's a, might be something that we may do later. Um, and we, te we tentatively put, think, put adjectives in our sentence so that we never put our head above the parapet. So I'm going to do this. Perhaps this might be a good idea. So green would be, I'm going to do this. Yes, I will. And I believe, Yvette, 
that America, you tend to speak more in green language. I might be wrong, but my inclination is inclined towards Americans being much more free flowing in I will, I can, I am. Um, in Scotland, we're more I might, perhaps, and maybe. And the red language is I won't, I don't, and I can't. <laughs> Um, and if we're using red language in regular conversation online, it is cutting conversation and it's unresourceful, uncreative, and you will not get teams working well together. So um, in the agile space, it's really important to think about green language and in encouraging collaboration and invitation. Um, so that is um, the sort of language traffic lights, blocking, stopping words, tentative filling words, which don't inspire and positive words, which will move conversation resourcefully forward. So last but not least, um, you, we've got a couple actually, your body language, nothing new here. If just because we're online doesn't mean to say we shouldn't arrive promptly. So make sure that you're on the meeting before it starts as best you can, obviously. Or if you're not going to be there, it's quite nice to let your team know that you're running late or whatever, so that you're not dipping in and out. Um, unless there is an um, expectation that that's going to happen because you've seen set it. Be aware of your posture, you know, posture, if you're open, if you're large, then you're inviting people into the space and you're communicating. If you're closed, and there's lots more I could talk about with regard to body language, but if you're closed and your head's coming down, then you're actually in a more anxious state, a more stressed state and a less resilient state. So posture. Um, facial expressions are really important in invitation through your face. Uh, invitation through your eyes and um, what you wear is also important if you're going to have engagement online in a meeting you know what are you actually putting on i did a session on color recently which was all about the invitation of color online and what that does how it invigorates a meeting or what it does to the meeting using your hands visibly it also will help you breathe better avoiding fidgeting it takes away from what you're saying and um, I can't eye contact to the camera. So imagine your audience is behind your camera, obviously, and speak to the camera um, with caution because you may want to occasionally take your eyes away and look at who's in the room. So I will quickly take you through, um, through these. Um, I'm just going to pick a couple of them. Dead air time is a positive thing. If there's silence in a, in a meeting, it doesn't mean to say that people should be awkward. It actually is a time for creative thinking. So as I said before, pausing and dead air time is, is great. As it says above, pauses are key for engagement. Um, invite your audience to participate as much, much as you can, although I've been spouting forth for the last 20 minutes, apologies. Um, but do feel free to interact at any time. <laughs> Um, use a variety of techniques, be that polling, if you've got Zoom, um, be it your breakout rooms, be it your um, chat box, be it conversation to and, back, to and fro. So interactive techniques will get more engagement on online communication. Um, and if somebody starts to uh, fidget, fidget or interrupt you, it may be that they're trying to break rapport because they're bored. So just being aware of your audience when you're actually in a meeting room and being aware of what you're doing and whether or not you're actually creating, creating boredom. Uh, I'll, I'm going to skip past the top tips because I think I've lingered long enough on that area and I'm going to pass back to um, Yvette to just um, talk a little bit more about how that then reflects back into the agile space. So, um, there we go. Yeah. So thank you, Wendy. A lot of- Race through, race through, sorry. <laughs> no, no, no problem. Uh, important stuff. And I know uh, Wendy is a, a speaking coach too. She's done TED Talks. Speaking in front of an audience is one of my big fears. And <laughs> so I get stage fright very easily. And that's another thing I like about virtual communication. I'm not nearly as, I don't get as much stage fright from, and, but it, you know, what we learn is we want to be authentic too. And we want to recognize ourselves. That's one of the things that Agile is all about is authenticity and continuing to improve and being getting feedback from others and learning and growing. So not to beat yourself up if like my background, I'm not, I, I can't use the memory uh, that my memory isn't enough on my camera. So I couldn't put the Agile 20 background that we were supposed to have. So I'm not perfect here and none of us are perfect. And we 
this is a part of the agile culture is accepting the that imperfection and working together to grow and learn and so not to beat yourself up if you're not perfect on all of these points um but what we want to do that that's part of how we do foster trust is to be vulnerable, ask for help, help one another, and recognize that we're all different. And so there aren't always hard and fast rules that this is exactly what you need to do. Um, let's let's go to the next slide, uh, Wendy. And and <clears throat> I also just want to point out that as I started that, well, let, let's talk about this first. They, they, Wendy talked a lot about body language and the use of the camera. I know that that, and that was brought up in the in the um, comments, how do we stop people from multitasking? And that is one of probably the biggest issues. This is one of the reasons why agile people push co-location so much is that we it is very tempting to multitask. I mean, especially again, if we now have the flexibility of not dressing up for success and and you know working in our pajamas if we want to. And so of course we don't want our cameras on when we don't feel good about the way we look or the you know our, our backgrounds or whatever but that then gets you into not being able to communicate with the body language and it also makes it all the more tempting to do something else instead of giving our full attention to what we're we're on this meeting or what the, what we're here for now there are going to be different times and situations of course if it's a great big meeting or, or whatever where maybe you don't have to be maybe they don't even want everybody to be there they only want the speakers to be on so it's going you know the, again there aren't hard and fast rules but be aware be aware that if you want to build relationships that means you need to be giving your full attention to the person who is speaking and and really foster that that kind of that relationship and show that you're there show it by your body but language that you're listening and engage when it's appropriate so beyond meetings and meeting etiquette and listening in that there's also the whole idea of really getting to know people one-on-one -on -one, which again is much easier when you're going into an office space and you are having those coffees or lunches or walks or celebrating birthdays or doing those things and so in agile and actually anywhere just for our own social enjoyment we want to know the real person we don't need to always just stick with what is the business at hand here we want to find out about them personally, what makes them tick, you know, get to be their friends and have some fun. So I'm going to do, I'm going to break out and to tell you that this is something I just discovered when I was trying to get my background to work that Zoom has added filters. So I want us all, if you're comfortable with it, to do a little exercise right now and choose a video filter about how you're feeling right now or to be you know be goofy with it i'm i saw that there were these lights here and i love christmas lights and i have them in my basement and everything so i'm going to um have mine be christmas lights and i'm again going you know there's like the snapchat the silly things there's borders um i invite you to use <laughs> that's beautiful wendy <laughs> like that so have fun with each other play i almost always you know play games i play games all the time i i give people points that don't mean anything like whose line is it anyway uh and but just to kind of foster some creativity and fun and engagement in whatever meeting that you're in is you know like <laughs> wendy's a little pig now so um, do you guys know how to do that? Do you so if you go down to your hover at the bottom of your screen where it's a, where you see the video and instead of stop video, click that little up arrow that's next to the video. And when you click that arrow, there's an option on the menu that says choose video filter. All right. So do that if you can. Richard, you're lost. Are you still lost, Richard? Yeah. I only have video settings. Uh, you don't have choose video filter? No. Ah, okay, yeah. try. Let's see if you say video settings, if there's a way to do. Um, 
<laughs> then when you go to settings, is there something Art that says background and filters on the on the um, left? It may be that you've not got it set up on the on the desktop, um, Richard, because you, there's settings that you have to put on to your your actual desktop before oh, you go. Okay. It may be that it's not set up. Okay. You can choose a virtual background. You can try choosing the virtual background. Yeah, my mine doesn't work because of um, memory issues. But yeah, just try that. It's fun. You know, you can be in space. Um, do you see? Are, is anybody else having trouble with this? I think um, for my team, people didn't see that option until they did like a they had the latest version installed yeah. so if you do an update yeah. then it could be that and i know richard you said you just are new to zoom so maybe you don't have the latest stuff so uh but i do i think it's fun to see the, the people that were able to get in and, and make the different backgrounds and if you can't do it now we can always do a a session another time to play. But that is something I wanted to point out with technology. There are so many tools and that give you different little collaboration and fun things to do. And part of Agile is experimenting, seeing what's working and seeing what doesn't work. And so I encourage all of you to do that with your, with your teams, with your teammates, but to build trust with people, get to know them get to know them, you know, maybe they're like, I don't like this touchy feely stuff. I don't like playing. I just want to get to the point. And um, so then you're like, okay, uh, then when, when I'm meeting with you, I, I will recognize that that's important to you. And, um, you know, again, other people are like, I need a little chit chat time. So it's hard to have everybody's meet, you know, you, you, this is part of being agile again is, is recognizing personalities, what motivates people and, and and asking them and having the conversation and having more than just business meetings, having personal meetings where you're getting to know your teammates. I will say again with Richard, who I met in 1999, one of the reasons that team was so strong was because there was a lot of humor. So this was way before we had any of these tools. We, we just, Richard was hilarious. I remember him sending jokes to the team. And so we, we felt like we were, you know, we got to be friends, not just business people. And, and that is really, again, part of what is missing sometimes when you're just working virtually because you're, you're just doing the business at hand and you're trying to be professional. And, um, you know, it's good to be professional, of course, but it's also good to show that personal authentic side of yourself so that you foster those, those real relationships. Um, all right, so, you know, chat one-on-one -on -one with your team members about what's going on in their lives. Maybe again, find out if, and be authentic and also be honest and candid about like if something isn't working and work together to figure out how you can improve that. All right, let's 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 see what else we, we've got here. Um, you know, what we just did, experiment and learn both what's working, what's not, and what, with whatever tools you're using, or maybe try new. There's just so many wonderful collaborative tools that are available to us right now. And every time I use one, I find some new fun little feature that, you know, I like to try to try to take advantage of when you're having a virtual team meeting. I don't know, um, I'll just add a wee thing here a bit. I don't know, Ange, did you see the news um, recently with the meeting? It was a council meeting and yeah, one of the... <laughs> so what actually happened in this, it was a very, uh, it seemed to be a quite a professional meeting. I, can, I just caught the tail end of it, Ange. I don't know if you saw it. You can maybe explain it better. It, it was a legal meeting. Um, it was a judge, a lawyer, um, Somebody else, but the, the lawyer was using their assistant's laptop and hadn't realized there had been a filter on it because they'd been working with their children before. So the lawyer suddenly appeared as a kitten. <laughs> I and saw that. I, saw and he that. Going, yeah. I, I think you might have a filter on. And you immediately saw the lawyer <laughs> panic and look down at the side of the screen. This little cat's eyes went down at the screen. He was trying to get the filter up. Then mine is like, I, I'm not a cat, I'm really here. <laughs> yeah, that, that went viral, I think. Um, oh, yes, I know that is. But again, so sometimes it's not going to work as you 
you expected. And that is how we learn. Um, and, you know, even with the breakout rooms, this is the first time I've done a recording and a breakout room. So I'm not really sure about if that just recorded me, you know, but again, you, this is part of being agile of recognizing we're not going to be the perfect the first time we do something and we're going to learn from it. So we continue to adapt and improve. All right. Um, leaders, this is especially important to, to be available, to be modeling the type of effective communication and collaboration that we're looking for from the people we're leading. And so be available. Don't feel like it, you I definitely don't be doing the micromanaging thing. So again, I've worked in virtual um, environments where it seems like the, the leaders feel like they need to monitor that people are online and that they're not doing their laundry or that they're, and you know, this is not good management behavior of being a micromanager, but, but you also, again, do want to encourage the staff and the people that you work with to be themselves, to be, to be on camera so that you can have that effective communication and to foster trust and to recognize that sometimes the people are going to, you know, especially in our current environment, if they have kids at home, that maybe they're going to be interrupted in that kind of thing. So you have that flexibility, have the conversation and um, be transparent yourself about what, what's going on with you in this environment and how you can effective, make sure that there is effective communication and collaboration. So we're, uh, it, I don't know if we have a final slide, but yeah, international team. Well, international, about, yeah, sorry. Um, it, with internet, if you are globally across, or if you are communicating across the globe, there are different cons cultural considerations. I think um, Wendy touched upon that, but the bottom line is don't, assume that because people are from this country, they're gonna act this way. I mean, it might be good to have that knowledge that this typically is the culture, but we have our own culture. We have our own personalities. Get to know the people again and, and learn from them and enjoy that you have that diversity and that, that ability to listen to those different accents and, and learn about what's happening in their countries or in their part of the world and, and, and share and just, um, take advantage again of that learning. Um, all right, so we're, we're at the last four minutes of this session. Do any, uh, any- Stop sharing for a minute. What, what was that, Wendy? I, I said I stopped sharing for a minute. I can't get rid of my roses quickly, so I'm just going to use <laughs> You'll just need to bear yeah, with me. <laughs> I think your roses are beautiful. Um, <laughs> I'm leaving my lights up because I like those. Uh, so any final, thoughts or questions or things that we didn't cover that uh, challenges that you guys are, are dealing with that you want to open up for a, a short little group discussion. No? Silence was the response. <laughs> um. Sorry, I, sorry the, 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 the I raced through my component as well. It's, you, uh, normally that session that I do is a half day session. And I was saying to Yvette, I don't quite know how I'm going to fit it into 25 minutes, but hey ho, so I rushed through it. But um, I hope that you all got something out of what both Yvette and me had to offer you just with regard to self-reflection and self-growth. And I think um, from my perspective, I always learn. It's always nice to um, work with somebody new, Yvette. Thank you very much for inviting me to uh, join you in this session as well. And uh, thanks very much for you guys coming on. It's nice to see an international audience from all over. I know. James, we didn't, we didn't get the chance to hear where you were from, James. Richard? Wait. James, he's on mute. There we go. No, not anymore. James is from St. Louis, Missouri. Uh, ah, you're St. Louis. Okay. okay. You know, um, since we do have three minutes left, maybe we can just hear from all of you where you're from and, and just like a 20 second who you are. Um, shall, we, shall we go around all? Um, let's see. James, just uh, James, anything else? What, what, what do you do? For my 20 seconds, I'm an agile coach, uh, do mentoring on the side, um, and I'm learning Spanish. So that's that's yeah. all right. Uh, 
it, and is it, I, I can't, Corey, is that right? <laughs> yeah, Corey, it's like Lori, just with a C. No, Corey, you got my bandit now. I was playing, I was just, I was just sorry. <laughs> I, I was doing the multitasking, apologies. Scrum <laughs> master. You were doing what we were, they were doing the exercise in the class. And I felt guilty. I was like, they're talking about this and I'm doing it right now. <laughs> Full disclosure. Uh, yeah, I'm a scrum master for an organization. I have about two, three teams right now, and I'm hopefully going to be transitioning and I'm working on my coaching skills to be an agile coach. And where are you from? Oh, I'm in Tampa, Florida. Oh, okay. Yay. So not you. Know, sure, it's not. Uh, not just not the, the Super Bowl win. Cool. Um, Angie, is it Angie or Ange? Or either, either. The answer to Angie or Ange, Scotland, funnily enough. Um, yeah, so I'm. Um, Project management, I've worked remotely with uh, for, for many years because I was based in Scotland. The developers were Scandinavia, quality assurance was Germany. So I, I've been lucky. Um, I've, I've got to have the benefits of it. Um, so yeah, I, I work with systems, making things work for people. And that, that's, that's about it. Great. Uh, Richard. I'm uh, Richard. I live in Holland still. Um, been in a, in a place uh, uh, where we live now, where we're going to move in three weeks, much closer uh, to, uh, to Rotterdam. So this is more the west side of uh, Holland. I'm still in application support, um, story of my life, I guess. And I'm um, working in a company that's an, uh, an importer for uh, a couple of brands of cars, uh, VW, Audi, Porsches, Lamborghinis, Bentleys. So we, we got a lot of, uh, of different stuff there. Great. But I, I think I've always, I almost haven't been there for over a year now with the COVID and everything. And I love working from home. So I'll manage this way. Harold. <laughs> okay. uh, I'm from Stuttgart, South Germany. Uh, I'm a business consult, uh, life consult mentor. Uh, I just started my own company. I'm 61. So in the middle of the life, uh, so that's challenging. And I do two, three Zoom meetings a day. So I'm very much used to this virtual thing. And in the meantime, I like it. <laughs> Good. Uh, Claudia? Oh, Claudia, you are on mute. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Hi, everybody. I'm from Houston, Texas, and um, I've started working as a scrum master. So all these tips come in really handy. I really appreciate that. I think probably the one that I struggle with the most is the pacing myself, you know, and making sure that it's not just all business and try to have a little fun from now on. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. And Christy? Hi, Christy from Winchester, Virginia. Um, I'm an agile delivery lead for about five plus teams. We're growing a lot um, for an organization that is in background screening and risk management. Um, and I definitely, uh, the topic you had of pausing definitely resonated with me. I think I, I tend to get excited too and talk too fast. And then it's like, you know, just overwhelming for everyone listening. So I, I'll pause more from now on. <laughs> breathe. Or breathe, breathe. <laughs> That'll help. Well, um, we are a couple got, minutes got, over, but I go we've ahead. Got one more, um, we've got a Surat, Surat want, but I don't oh. know how to pronounce your name. <laughs> oh, Surat want, yes. Do you want to introduce yourself? Hey, this is Surat. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, we can. We can't see you, but we can hear you. Yeah, I don't have a working camera. That's okay. Where are you from? Yeah, I'm based out of Los Angeles. Oh, okay. All right. Thank you very much. Yes. Thanks to all of you for coming. Um, why don't Wendy and I, we can stick around a couple more minutes for anybody that wants to, if they want to give feedback or have any questions but since we're past the top of the hour we want to let you you know go leave without feeling awkward about that and yeah. um if any of you want our details you can screenshot that and you can connect with us on linkedin or whatever it'd be lovely to carry on the conversation with it with you guys and it's been great having such a diverse mix of people from all over the states and from europe as well it's been great i've thoroughly enjoyed it 
So um, if you have, I'll change, I'll go back to stop sharing the screen, but just giving you the opportunity if you want to screen share it and connect, that's our details and it'd be lovely to see you on LinkedIn. Thanks to all of you for your participation and uh, for for humoring me with the filter and, and for just uh, joining in. That's again, what we love when we're, when we're hosting or uh, giving a meeting, we just love to see the, the audience um, joining and engaging. So thank you all for that and have a great day. Enjoy the rest of um, Reflect 20 or Agile 20 Reflect. Or have a good evening for those of us who are not yes. just about to start our day. <laughs> Wherever you are on your day. <laughs> okay, bye. Thank you, yeah. take care. Thank you, bye. Bye, bye. bye everyone. Now, our day is ending, yours is starting. <laughs> good to see you again, Richard. Thank you again for, for, for coming in. Yeah, yeah, it was nice. It's been a long time. Yes, good to see you. Okay, well, uh, I'm sorry? I was just saying goodbye. <laughs> <laughs>